In this video, we'll introduce some strategies around errors in your programs. Errors are actually fundamental to the process of software engineering and understanding how to work with them is key to being able to move forward in the writing of your programs. We'll define two broad categories of errors. The first one is syntax errors. These are errors for which the computer gives you direct feedback on something that went wrong when it tried to run a line of code. I'm going to get a new copy of the starter code so I can demonstrate some errors. So now that I've run this, I can see that I have a folder of the starter code with the correct name open here. Now I'm going to go to my applications folder and open up VS Code. Then I'm going to drag the errors folder into the VS Code window so that I can start working on the script.js. I'm going to copy this entire function from the git book and see what error it produces. If I click right here, then it'll copy the entire thing. I've pasted in my function and now I'm going to call it in the main function, just like I did in the functions video. I'm going to replace this hello world string with a call to the function. The input value is the input parameter from the main function on line one. Let's save this and see what it does in the browser. I've opened my index.html file in the browser. The next thing I'm going to do is open the dev tools. So far, we've used the dev tools to demonstrate some simple concepts and to run a little bit of our code. But in fact, throughout the entire rest of this course, Every single time you open an index.html file, you need to immediately open the dev tools. You can see that already the dev tools is telling me that I have errors with this red circle and white X. I want to be able to capture these errors right away before I do anything uh, within the lifespan of my program. So if I want to read those specific errors, I can go and select the console tab and the dev tools is going to print out for me my specific error. Let's look into exactly what it's trying to tell me uh, in this error. The first most obvious thing to do is simply to read the error message text. But there will be a lot of cases where the error message text doesn't exactly make any sense, uh, it's too cryptic, or it doesn't point to the exact thing that you need to fix in your code. So the next thing to look at is the line on which the error happened. So that's always this white text right here. It's saying that on line six of my script.js that I have an error. So that's on this line. And for me, I already recognize this error. It saying that within line six, it has a problem with this parenthesis. So unexpected token, uh, the interpretation of that is that it doesn't like uh, this character. So that usually means that you're missing a, another character somewhere else in the line uh, before that parenthesis. So I just also know from looking at this code, uh, being able to recognize the structures here that I'm missing my opening left parenthesis right there. So let's try to fix this and see if it works. I'm going to type in the left parenthesis over here I'm going to save the code and I'm going to refresh the browser. And when I do that, the error message goes away. Again, it's very important that each time you open the index HTML file in the browser that you immediately open the dev tools. There may have already been an error when the program loaded. And so you need to be able to catch that. However, that doesn't mean that in the course of using the program, there won't be another syntax error later. So now we're going to introduce one of those kinds of errors. We'll see that when the code loads in the browser that I don't get any error, but as soon as I start using it, uh, something will happen. So 
on line two, I'm going to put back the hello world message, but I'm going to forget to take out this input. Okay. I'm going to save this and let's lo look in the browser to see what happens. I'm going to refresh the browser. And when I refresh the browser, there is no error that appears in the console. So right now my code is error free. And when I hit the submit button, then I do see an error. And this error is complaining about the fact that I've left in this hello world and I still have input with the parentheses. So now the next step would be for me to diagnose this. The second broad category of error we'll talk about is logical errors. For these types of errors, you'll never see any red text in the DevTools console. You'll simply not get the behavior that you expected. Let's see some examples in the code. I'm going to start by copying this example main function from the git book. I'm going to replace the one I have currently. And let's see what this behavior is in the browser. I'm going to save it and refresh. Now when I type in a number that I want to convert, it gives me an unexpected value. We're going to use a function called console log to help us diagnose what's wrong with this program. Console log is a function whose parameter will be displayed within the DevTools console. Let's save this and see what it does. We can see that the code the string that I wrote inside of console log is the one that appears inside the DevTools. I'm going to use console log to help diagnose what's wrong with my code by simply printing out a bunch of random words. I'm going to pay attention to the order that these happen in and whether or not they happen at all. Take a moment to see if you can figure out what the order is going to be and which ones will print out when I refresh the browser and when I hit the button. Now I'll hit the refresh button. And now I'll hit the submit button. We can see from our experiment that line 14 didn't run. And so now we can work backwards to help diagnose the problem and what might be going wrong with our code. So on line 14, uh, this is inside of our function kilometers to miles. And so we can back up one level to see where we're actually executing kilometers to miles. That would be on line seven. And here we can see that actually we're missing some syntax here. We're not actually executing kilometers to miles and we used to have our input parameter here. So now let's save this and see if this fixes the problem. I'm going to refresh and then we'll hit the button again. Now I'm going to copy the next example from the Git book. This code replaces everything that I have in my script.js. Let's save it and see what the behavior is. If I try to do a conversion, then I get an undefined value. We can use console log in a second way, which is we can pass in the data values that we're dealing with in our program to evaluate what they are and if they're the values that we expected or not. First, I'm gonna add a console log on after line nine to see the value of distance in miles. I'm going to give a string so that I can identify that this is the value that I'm outputting. I always want to label the
the values that I'm outputting so that I can clearly see them and interpret the results inside the browser. Let's see this in the browser. Now, when I type a number into the input box and hit submit, I see the value that I passed in in the console log in line 11. So this console log is telling me that the value is being correctly, correctly calculated on line nine. I've confirmed that the value in distance and miles is what I thought it was. The second console log we can write is after I've called the kilometers to miles function. And this is to verify the value that is being returned from the function. Let's see this in the browser. Now when I type in a value in the input box and hit submit, I can see that my output value variable on line three and on line five is undefined. And that confirms what I'm seeing in the gray box as well. So now I've narrowed down where the problem is in my program. I've narrowed down the problem in my code to somewhere between where I was able to output the correct value and where the value output was incorrect here. So if I look carefully at my code, I can actually notice that on line 14, I'm actually not returning the value that I'm supposed to be returning. I'm supposed to be returning distance in miles here. So let's save this and take a look at it in the browser. Now, if I type something in the input box and hit submit, I get the correct value inside the gray box as well. Errors are fundamental to the process of building a program, not just ending up with the correct program. There are so many permutations of what could possibly go wrong with a program that it's impossible to encapsulate in a single video. The important takeaway is that the strategy of how to approach and debug an error is something that you only learn through practice and through experience.